Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Matt from Mattisfaction. Matt has a YouTube channel where he shares his passion for knives and EDC gear and co-hosts a popular live stream for knife folk with said Stevie called said faction. In the past year, Matt's passion has pushed him from hobbyist to professional knife guy with the advent of his first production folder, the Kaiser Phoenix, a refreshing and unlikely shape for such a popular knife in a time when the utility shape blades seem to dominate. Uh, to me, that's exciting. We'll find out what it was like going from fan to bona fide designer and find out what's in the offing. Uh, but first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, download the show to your favorite podcast app, etc. And if you want to help support the show, you can do so by joining us on Patreon. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Matt, how are you, sir? Good to have you on the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, I'm good. Uh, thanks for having me. Oh, it's uh, my pleasure. I've looked through your backlog of different podcasts, and I don't know how well I fit in here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do my darndest. Well, if you, if you looked uh, if you looked far and deep, yeah, uh, you'll see that I have everyone. I like I like to talk to everyone from from. Uh, uh, established knife makers to people like you and me who are big fans and collectors who make a jump. Well, you've made a jump and I want to congratulate you on the, uh, the Kaiser Phoenix. Ooh, thank you. There, there it is. <laughs> oh. What a beauty. Yeah. Nice little, uh, Persian blade or clip, or whatever you want to call it. I call it a Persian. Well, uh, who are you going to believe? The designer? I, I, you know what? I, actually, I would have called it a clip point. Um, uh, but I, I like the upswept blade. And what I was saying in the beginning um, really rings true to me. Like, I feel like I've seen so many worn cliffs and sheep, sheep's foots and uh, so more utility uh, aimed blades. Tell me about what it was like coming up with this and, and where this design comes from. Um, well, in a world of knives, like you said, there's a lot of worn cliffs and drop point is the biggest one. And so one day I was just doodling and uh, I just kind of come up with a, a doodle that kind of had an upswept blade shape. And uh, if you know me, I cannot draw. So uh, I actually had help from Sharif Manganis. He just came out with this Kaimano. And uh, together, he helped me turn my doodle into what you see here. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it was a really fun process. But I, I like different knives. I don't like drop points just all the time. I, I, I need some variety. And this is a very utilitarian shape, like you were saying. It's a very good slicer. Uh, Scabs actually had it for a while, this one. And he, he stabbed through tires and everything with it. This thing handled a lot of abuse. I love that guy. I love Scab. I love what he puts knives through. He, he'll do what I certainly will not do, even with knives that I know can handle it. And just watching him do it is good enough for me. Yes. Um, so when I get my Phoenix, I will know that it can take all of that, but I will not have to put it through all of that. Um, yeah, so you've got this, this trailing point Persian blade. And first of all, you said uh, Sharif Manganis. I know him from... A couple of Kaisers that came out a couple of years ago that were really cool. Um, uh, and I guess he's got a new one coming out. But um, tell me what, like, really where that Persian y thing came from for you. Well, I love the Phoenix. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, from the area, you know, Persia down to China and everything. And so when I started my channel, my first knife I ever bought for the channel was the CRKT Ritual, big old Persian. Mm. And I've, I've just always loved them. And so I wanted to kind of incorporate that into something a little more utilitarian, not as crazy, 
but maybe something people might actually want to use. <laughs> yeah, and and it's got a uh, a point that is upswept or a tip that's upswept and a nice long clip, uh, but the, all of that belly up towards the front seems uh, very like usable and great for sort of rocking on a on a flat surface. Yeah, I've I've put it through a sandwich real easy. <laughs> uh, I, when I use my knives, I'm not a hard user. I'm I'm a city boy, so most of mine <laughs> is like opening boxes and sandwiches. And this is a good sandwich cutter. <laughs> yeah, and if you need to know more than that, we also know it can it can handle uh, radial steel uh, belted tires. Uh, yes. Which is cool. I, I too am a am a, a city boy ish. Now I'm a sub, suburban boy, but uh, same same sort of uh, point of reference. And uh, I don't tend to use my knives very hard, though. I'm drawn towards those that I know I can. When you design the Phoenix, and when you kind of uh, well, when you started shopping the design to um, uh, Kaiser, what did what were you thinking you wanted this to be for in a, in a sense? Um, I wanted to have like a, <clears throat> I wanted something named after my son who's putting a box on the floor for some reason, <laughs> but um, I always thought it'd be cool. Y you go to the store and you buy like a dirt Pinkerton or, you know, Laconico, whatever. I, it'd be neat to find a knife made by someone, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, so I figured I'd, I'd throw my hat in there. It was kind of a joke, actually. Like, I, I was like, you know, I wonder if I could get this going. And then Sharif, with his previous history with Kaiser, showed me who to email, and I just did it. And uh, it was surprisingly easy, but nerve wracking. There's a lot of silence, and you're just sitting there, like, biting your teeth. You mean because you send a design off, it kind of languishes in, in obscurity, and then you hear some news later? How does that work? Yeah, yeah, you'll send your design, and then it goes through three rounds of voting. I, I don't know who votes on it, but if it reaches the third, and it could take three months, all of a sudden they'll be like, here's the contract, sign it, and then we'll we'll get to work on it. And so for three months, you submit your design, and you're like, do they like it? Do I email them? What do I do? And uh, it, it taught me a lot about patience. I'm not a very patient person. <laughs> mm. Well, especially when you send something off like that. Oh, yeah. I, I'll show you what I sent, too. <clears throat> you never want to send your, your full design. So I sent just the top picture here. That's uh, oh, oh, nice. You can see it has like more belly back then. It's gone mm -hmm. through some changes, but a little bit of a recurve there. Yeah, so you kind of just send something like this, and then you 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 hope that they like it, and then once they say yes, then you can start getting into your technical details. Oh God, I love that this is all hand drawn. Uh, if you're only listening, um, Matt is showing me the the detailed breakout of the parts for the Kaiser Phoenix, and they're all hand drafted, like a like a Bill Harsey. Uh, design or something it's it's pretty cool that's that's so these all, were these were drawn by sharif i take it yes, then <laughs> they were all drawn by sharif because i cannot draw so, so uh oh sorry uh, no, no no i'm sorry i keep interrupting you but you had uh you were saying that when you send a design first off to an oem especially i guess one like kaiser because that's the experience you're talking about you're only sending them the catalog shot or, or what the final product is supposed to look like, but not how they're supposed to engineer it. Yep. Yep. You, you don't want to send them everything. Uh, it, it, it leaves them wanting. And uh, it, it also, it, it gives you an opportunity. Like if you submit just a basic one, as you're waiting, maybe you're like, oh, well, maybe it's got too much belly. Like in this case, it kind of swoops too far down. Mm. So you can change it as it uh, goes, and once they approve it, then you could show them more technical and be like, yeah, that's that's more what we want. Right, right. Okay, so, and now I'm seeing in the, um, uh, maybe it's easier to see from that drawing, but you took that from a deep belly with a recurve to more of a straight edge down to a curved belly. It's starting to look more like a Navaja to me. Yeah, right, right there, kind of, yeah. Yeah. 
like I said, there there was still some changes. Like, yeah, that is more straight edge. So we did go with the more belly there. Mm -hmm. Just just because uh, the belly's more utilitarian, especially with when you're cutting your sandwich. <laughs> well, yeah, and you need you need a number of different surfaces here. You have the the straight uh, kind of flat edge or the straight edge, uh, dipping all the way down to a a rounded off belly that's almost like a secondary point or a low down point and then you got the point point all right so let me get to the point here matt uh you know my taste is for the tactical <laughs> i like what you're doing to get the focus there i don't like this camera sometimes i'll tell you what <laughs> i hear that uh so my taste uh, veer towards the tactical the the more historically combative designs and something about the phoenix here uh has both it straddles that line it's a very useful utilitarian knife but you look at it it's also like really fearsome and i always joke that i'm a shallow guy maybe it's not a joke but that looks really matter to me when it comes to knives and uh, so tell me a little bit about that it's a very aggressive design and 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 you and i were we're two nice guys but why are we drawn to these aggressive designs I think, you know, anytime a man holds something sharp, you just automatically get that, oh, I need to cut, need to stab, you know, your your hunting instincts kick in, you know, you kind of you want to start crawling through the bushes and th this this will let you do that. And with tactical knives, it's all about, it, they may not look like it, but ergonomics, you want it to lock in your hand. Mm -hmm. And so this one, we made the handle swell really wide so that it goes right into your palm and locks in it's not going anywhere if you were to use it in your tactical aspects either grip yeah but i don't know i think it always just comes down to our old caveman days you just want to yeah. cut something <clears throat> i think you're right i had a uh kempo teacher when i lived in philadelphia and she was a woman and uh whenever any any of the guys came in with a new knife, the whole class would stop and everyone would like hover around it. And she's like, what is it with guys and knives? And, and that always stuck out. I mean, that's like 25 years ago at this point, but it's always stuck out with, uh, in my head because even the, the most uninterested in knives person guy, especially, uh, you can just show it to them and they'll be like, mm, I kind of like that. It reminds me of something like uh, uh, other days when we were more stout hearted. See, I, I think that's why gas station knives are a thing. They're they're flashy. They got the serrations. They're sharp. They're wide angles. They got bottle openers and glass breakers. Like, that's the appeal. You just want something that does everything and it looks cool. Yeah, yeah. It's almost artsy. You know, it's like sculpture. It's like a little it, it piece is. of sculpture. And I wanted to show one thing real quick. I found. Yeah. It. So this just proves to me that, like, you know. Mm -hmm. Anybody can get something, like that, but this is the very first rendition of the Phoenix. <laughs> Whoa, that's I, I doodled that, and uh, that's the very first rendition. And so that you know turned into this, which turned into this. So this has a very unique build. I was uh excited and interesting, especially given this week I just did a whole podcast on aluminum. I did a whole show on aluminum handled knives and I found out that this one is aluminum. I just always assumed it was titanium and You're I got to say, <laughs> what's that? It's supposed to be titanium. Oh, but aluminum is, I love aluminum. I like it. I, it keeps it light. Yeah. I think there should be, I, I, I'm not, I think people like titanium because it was used on the SR 71 and it's called titanium. But I, I, to me, I love aluminum. I love the aluminum handles and, the fact that we rarely see aluminum handles with bolsters and carbon fiber being treated like steel or titanium. Um, tell me about what into what went into the decision about the materials. S thirty five en, great, you know, awesome so, blade steel. Since I just licensed the design, we don't get like the full run of the mill. So I didn't get okay. to choose the blade steel. I got to pick the colors, which I wanted more red. But they put on this uh, orange lava. And uh, I originally spec for titanium because everyone likes titanium. Mm -hmm. But then they went with uh, aluminum. And even the boxes that came in said titanium. 
So I think it was a last minute change that they just went with aluminum. But like the clip is titanium and the backspacer. But I think the aluminum was a good choice because it did make it a lot lighter. It's smooth. I like the way it feels. It's uh, I'm sorry. No, 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 please. <laughs> I, I'm constantly jumping in because, well, uh, the, the first thing I thought of is if you don't have, like, do you now have the desire, having gotten your feet wet with the Phoenix, this is your first one, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. So this is your first knife. And man, you came out of the gate, you know, with Kaiser. That's a, that's, uh, from my perspective, that's huge. Uh, to me, they're, you know, one of my very favorite companies. And to come out with them, that's pretty amazing on a first knife. And, but you licensed it and you've gone through that process. So now I'm curious next time, uh, and I'm assuming there's a next time, would you want to license your uh, product again, or would you want to OEM it and do it exactly the way you want to do it and distribute yourself? So I don't have the, uh, the wallet big enough to OEM. So it's just licensing for now. And uh, I actually already have number two being made by Kaiser right now. Oh, I have. You, you want to see a picture? Yes, I do. So I kind of printed it out, but this is the Orion. Oh, oh man. That is cool. That's the Orion. Yes. Named after my second son. Um, here's first another. knife named after your first son. Uh, Phoenix, his middle name, I guess. And then this. Yes. Oh, man. So the backspacer has uh, the three stars milled in, and then these three pins represent Orion's belt as well. Uh, my family's big space nerds, so <laughs> Eli was named after the Phoenix supercluster of galaxies, and Isaiah is named after the Orion constellation. So I wanted to name the knives after them. So this one is currently in development, and it's it's going to be a big boy if I have it my way. It's almost a ten inch knife. Whoa! Right on. Yeah, so uh, you're talking about a four and a half inches. Yes. I like big knives. Yes, as do I. And we have it spec to where like the thumb studs are removable and hopefully the flipper tab because Kaiser's done it in the past. Yeah. So yeah, I'm they... really hoping that they do it because uh, I like I like all the opening methods and I, some people don't. So it's cool. Like if you don't like flippers, get it out of there. No big deal. But if you do, it's there. I mean, the option. I like options. So we're, we're going for it. But again, right now, I'm in that nail-biting quiet stage. I haven't heard a thing. So we'll see. I think they're just going to hit me one day with an email saying, here's your prototype. What do you think? <laughs> that that quiet stage has to be kind of frightening because you're not exactly sure what they're doing. And, and I would imagine they're probably making uh, design choices based on engineering that you might not be pr um, aware of or that kind of thing. Yeah, and Kaiser is, uh, they're, they're kind of stepping up their game. They're doing more crazy things. Like you saw the Huntsman. Yes. All the milling and the blade to make it look like the eyeballs. Yes. And a lot of their knives are, they're doing different styles. So it's getting crazier and crazier. And uh, Kaiser's really moving up in their skill, uh, their techniques, and everything. And, uh, one thing I like, I've been saying it since I started like this, I tell everyone, you can design a knife. I think everyone should. I've been saying 2024 is the year of the people. Because, I mean, we've been seeing knives come out from like Lefty and KC. Stas is about to have them come out. And then you have people who you just see in the chat as you, you, you're you doing a live stream. And you see like... This guy's got a knife coming out, and this guy's got a knife coming out. I think it's it's really cool, and everyone's got a different idea and a different perspective, and it's pushing some of these knife companies to limits they haven't seen before. I think it's a, it's a very exciting time, and I can't wait to see like what next year has. Yeah, I, I think it is also, uh, especially given the fact that people who spend uh, – much of their time thinking about this, considering it, uh, developing preferences <laughs> and that kind of thing. When they start making knives, it's a different 
um, it's a slightly different game than uh, someone who's been making knives for years and and um, you know you're getting it from the perspective of an enthusiast, which is it's always going to be everything to eleven, which I I love. Yeah, yeah. no holds barred. They 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 will just they like what they like and they'll put it on paper and then go for it. And I think it's awesome. Yeah, I I do too. And it's uh it's made things exciting, you know. Um, uh, uh, you so your first knife, upswept Persian. I like to call anything even approximating a clip point uh, a bowie so uh in my mind it's kind of a persian bowie a beautiful it. carbon fiber handle with the aluminum and the up sweep on the s35 en and then you show us our second uh, your second one the orion and it couldn't be more opposite tell me about uh the the contrast in those designs so that actually stems from my two boys eli uh He's more mellow, more chill. He's got he 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 represents like the curves, straight lines. He's relaxed. My second son is absolutely crazy. Uh, he he does not sit still. He gets into everything. He is pure chaos. I love him. He he's like a a scientist. He takes things apart. He just oh. doesn't know how to put it back together. So the Orion is just pieces and chaos and lines and. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I try to, like, put a piece of me into all my drawings and stuff. And uh, it makes it more personal. It's, it's got that personal satisfaction touch when I get it. And it's uh, it's really neat. So I get to see some of my boys in these. And then my next knife is going to be of my wife. Oh, nice. So she's a lefty. And I'm curious what she wants to help design it. So when we do oh, that... Cool. That we'll, we'll we'll see what that comes out as. It's gonna be neat. Well, so what is uh, satisfaction in terms of your taste? You said it's very satisfaction. Tell tell us about your taste in knives before you started actually designing them and having them made. I I love all kinds of knives. Um, I have all kinds of styles. Like even here, you know, I, I just recently got this the Alluris. It's a nice yeah. drop point, but it's got a big belly, so it's a little different. Um, here, here's a knife that everyone seems to hate, but I love it. I, it's one of my favorites. This is the Real Steel Real Slim. It's discontinued. <laughs> I laugh at that knife. No, I'm not laughing. It looks like a scalpel. When this came out, I thought that's like a medical instrument. It cuts so good, though. This is a perfect gentleman's steak knife yeah it's, uh, like i said you're one of those too you just don't like it but you know what I no 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 I'm, I'm not saying that i actually kind of think it's charming i i do like uh uh different style things and i i like anything that kind of looks like a scalpel with that like uh yeah, yeah that that right there this guy he uh i don't know what his reference was he's no longer with us but he just drew something wacky probably one day and went to real steel and they said sure why not and uh you know now I'm, now i get to hold this thing and a lot of people look at that and they're like why but i think <laughs> this has to be experienced i think it's just it's so cool but it's different i mean you got a bulbous top yeah. over here and it kind of looks like a speedboat window right there i don't know there's a lot going on but i love it that's funny that you uh, make that reference because I have two knives in particular that I love a lot that I compare to Italian speedboats. I don't know why I always say Italian, but to me, they look kind of so it's interesting that you that you make that comparison with that knife. I, I don't want to leave the Phoenix yet because uh, I want to find out more about your um, experience working with Kaiser. I know you you talked about that, that quiet period. Um, oh, yeah. But in terms of did you have um as a new designer did you try to uh shop your design to a number of different people or did you just go straight with sharif through to uh kaiser honestly i just went straight to kaiser yeah well yeah i mean why would you okay so before you were talking about this reminds me you were talking about how they've really stepped up their game and their but i think their game was stepped up from the start because Kaiser came onto my 
uh, radar with the, um, oh God, now I'm going to forget. Uh, they had skulls on them and they were fully contoured. Um, oh, it, Italian last guy's name, Matt, something or other. Oh, it'll come to me in a second. Uh, but <laughs> sorry. Uh, but this is, we're talking like, 10 years at least ago and and they were producing um titanium handles that were fully contoured which is still a very expensive uh and difficult process and they were doing it on these um i hope people are yelling at their computers right now telling me what it is matt uh italian last name but he had the the skulls on the side beautiful recurve blades um i really regret getting rid of those Kaiser is such a, a great company. Um, but did you have much um, interaction? Like, I, I think when you have something OEM by them, there's probably maybe more interaction. Is that correct? There is, yeah, because there's a lot of, like, I talked to Sharif. So he he teaches me, like, the behind the scenes. So he'll, he'll message me, like, I got an email today. We're talking about scale materials. Or maybe they had to adjust the blade length a little bit or put a sharpening choil or uh like there's a lot more that goes into oem and uh licensing you kind of you get some creative freedom but you don't get as much okay that seems like a nice place to be actually i, I think so oeming you have to have a couple of like 20 grand or something just to start you got to buy your knives and everything licensing you can go in with zero yeah and you just get off of the sale price like a, a percentage of it so it's, Seems... a, it's a good way for people to get their name out there or just yes. get started yeah that seems like a great way to build your name yeah and it, it's it's a really fun process and i hope more people do it i want to see everyone have a knife out there and uh, it, it's cool like i said earlier when you're on a live stream and you see someone and you're like oh, that guy has four knives being considered right now, or this person has two being yeah. made right now. And, uh, you know, they don't have a channel or anything, but it's just cool knowing it. Yes. So I, I hope to see more. Wouldn't it be interesting if uh, other industries were like this? Uh, you know, I have a design for a bicycle. I'm just going to have, you know, Schwinn make this for me. Like, that, it doesn't work like this in most other industries, I don't think. I don't think so. I'd design a really cool bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One that can hold me too. I'm, I'm a pretty hefty guy. <laughs> so uh, have you always been a knife guy? Like what, 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 how has your interest and passion developed and grown it, uh, in knives? We go camping when I was a kid. So I've always had knives, always been around them. I used to collect, gas station knives like you know five dollars at uh, the mall or something always had something cool on me i used to stick a uh, straight razor in my sock oh yes man yeah so i mean I, I always just had knives and my first like real knife was the buck 110 once i got that it was it was, it was done every tree around me was gone <laughs> i loved it so is this from a young, I mean, are we talking like you're a, a young boy when all this is happening? Oh, yeah, like six, seven. Oh, oh okay. I was right. in the Boy Scouts when I was a kid, so we had to learn safety on our little Swiss Army knife. And But, yeah, I've, I've always been around knives, and I'm trying to get these guys into them. Uh, Eli actually owns the Phoenix Prototype. That's Ooh. Cool. Get a cool slip for it as a present. Oh, man. So, it's cool having a prototype too, because you could see some of the differences that they. Uh, oh. So this, this is son actually, is your birthright. I mean, it is. This is Eli. As I tell him that all the time, he gets the prototype. So that is cool. Yeah. So, uh, what about designing? How was it that? I mean, I know you just kind of revealed your philosophy. We should all be making knives i don't know about that like i i have my doubts uh but uh i haven't been disappointed yet from um i i call them generally like yourself included trusted voices on youtube who know about knives who are making knives they're awesome i got a cabinet uh, with a bunch of them in there and um i think that it's important for an enthusiast group if they can to be 
to be doing this. But in terms of you, uh, how did it how did it come about that you're like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm actually um, going to design this knife, and we're going to have this made. Like I said earlier, I did the doodle, and then I knew Sharif had designed knives through Kaiser. He did the Grazioso uh, through yeah. Kaiser, and uh, I one day I asked him, I was like, hey, what what does it take to get a design made? Because I I've always thought it'd be cool to have like a knife made, and I yeah. I don't have the skills to be out there blacksmith in my own. <laughs> I, I'm that'll never happen. So he kind of he gave me an email address through Kaiser, which is actually on their website. And uh, I sent them like, we took that doodle I showed you on my phone and turned it into more like what you see on the paper here. And then mm. we just sent it and we waited. I honestly expected them to be like, ah, oh, no, we're not, we ain't doing that. But then they said, yeah, we'll put it through the voting process. And all of a sudden, like, that was the moment it came real. Like, oh, oh, okay, they're actually considering this. Normally, when you try to sell something, you, you know, you get the door slammed in your face right away. But they they said, yeah, we'll consider it. And that was the longest three months of my life. Right there, I'll tell you what. <laughs> A lot of sleepless nights. Wow, that's cool to hear. We'll put it through the voting process. So now you're imagining all the muckety mucks at Kaiser looking at this. Hmm, yes you know, and passing it around. And I have no idea who's on that. I asked, I was like, who's on the team or how long does it take? And they're like, it's confidential. Yeah. So uh, it was uh, they're like, none of your business. Send more designs. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Basically, um, <clears throat> they do want more. They're like, what's cool about Kaiser is they're actually, they're not just a knife company now. They're part of the community. So like, they know people who interact with them all the time. And so they're always doing giveaways and they do their like Kaiser X program where people could submit a design. And so they're actually reaching out. So I think that kind of helped for them to accept my design. Like we're reaching back both directions now. And it's pretty cool. They're, they're, they're like a knife company for the people, not just pushing out knives, but they, they listen to us, which is really neat. That is, I mean, uh, and also they're, they're big and they have, uh, uh, a lot of capacity obviously, but to be nimble enough to listen and make changes and to also assimilate, uh, what their customers want kind of on an annual basis. That's a, that's a huge, um, sure. well, that's a, that's a, an unlikely thing for a large company. Yeah. Which I don't know how they do it. But I, I think it's really neat. Uh, I'm not trying to Kaiser fanboy. I, I just <laughs> I just happen to like them. So, but you know the other companies are great. From what I've heard, Kubi has done mm -hmm. like a lot of Sharifs, and they're they've been really good with him. And Concept is stepping up their game, from what I've heard. And but I just speak from Kaiser because that's all I know right now. Well, okay, so you had a campaign going. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still ongoing. Uh, but to get Post Malone to notice, uh, tell me about that. I I just started it as a joke. I kind of I took a break because uh, a lot of people started getting negative, so I, I took a break. But I'm gonna fire it up again. But like, uh, I I know he's never gonna reply. I don't even think like he runs his Instagram. It's probably a team or something. Right. But what I thought was cool is I started tagging him. Uh, some people from the community started jumping in like, oh, I love you post. And then I started using it as a way to showcase some of my favorite small business makers. Like uh, I showed you the Lancelot slip. Yeah. And so it started kind of uh, shedding some light on people you might never heard of to get some cool stuff for your <clears throat> EDC gear. There's another Lancelot slip. This is from my Lynch pry bar. That's that's so. some pretty smart marketing there. It, I just thought it'd be just something fun, you know, instead of just tagging just for tagging sake, you know, try to do something with it. He's a knife fan, right? He is. That's he why is. I started tagging him. He's okay. A, he's that's a what giant I think. Mouse fan. He's a what? He's a giant mouse fan. A so. giant mouse fan. Yeah. That's cool. That's that is very cool. It's not like Benchmade or 
uh like it's not low hanging fruit uh, you know oh. that's that's a deep cut for a for a, a a casual knife guy that's so cool uh i i seem to remember maybe it was on ridiculousness or something which i i'm ashamed to say i'm I love that show, but uh, maybe it was there or somewhere else. But I remember him saying he's into knives. Also, I remember rocker uh, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith carries a an Ultra Tech, which I think is cool. Uh -huh. You know, kind of goes with his flamboyant nature. Um, I'm just start tagging him next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He might he might respond. Um, but I, I I really liked that uh, that little campaign you did. It was I mean. Um, I, people are jerks and they get negative, but I thought it was kind of cool because I was hoping that there would be a, you know, some sort of break. And all it takes is that kind of repetitive uh, persistence for something. Yeah. You know, finally, one day, one of his one of his people is like, oh, look at this post likes knives. Look at this post. You know, you never know. See that right there. I, I'll probably start it up again tomorrow then. Like. <laughs> It's just a, a lot of the negative comments. I mean, that wasn't a lot, but like it was enough to be like, ah, maybe they're right. Wasted my time. But I did have fun like tagging some of my favorite people with Post Malone. Uh, here's a knife you might like. This one got a lot of uh, showcase. Uh, Keith the Knife Freak. Oh, yeah. He makes these Ulus. That's and, so cool. Uh, this thing will go through a pizza like no one's business. So a lot of people never heard of Keith until I started tagging him on there. And of course, uh, Lancelot Leather slipped to go for it. Oh, nice. Can you guess who my favorite leather maker is? <laughs> so you have a channel. Let's talk about your channel for a minute. And I want to I want to find out. Um, also, I want to get your picks from your perspective about knives out there. But um, how did you start the Matisfaction channel? What was your impetus? Okay, so... Uh, I have a lot of anxiety issues, and so to help try to fight them, I just started a channel. I didn't know anybody in the community. I just, I got like the CRKT ritual. I, I took a big box, put it on my desk, cut a hole in the top because I saw everyone doing top down. So I stuck my phone on there and just filmed in the box. Oh, and oh, that's cool. <laughs> it worked for a little while. And, uh, I don't like like the sound of my voice on camera. I don't like seeing myself on camera. So it's kind of a way to push through it. And then the next step was like doing the live streams. I did a face reveal. I was breathing into a paper bag. <laughs> so it was uh it was just a way to fight through some of the the stuff I, I deal with. But it's been fun. I, I will never not appreciate it. And uh, Man, I, I wouldn't do anything different. That's uh, amazing. I mean, that's like courageous because that's what courage is doing something that you're afraid of, but you still do it. Um, and then you break through. I think that's that's pretty cool. Thank you. Well, yeah. And that's a good example. You're a father. That's a good example to children, you know, to see like this is not something I'm comfortable with, but it's important and I'm doing it. And now I'm comfortable with it. You know, obviously it, it seems to me and probably everyone else that you've gotten over uh, whatever that thing was, or at least it wow. seems you have because you're very comfortable on camera. I still deal with it. Like I had literal nightmares last night. I was like, oh, the podcast is coming up. I kept waking uh -oh. up. So huh. they're getting better though. I mean, it, it's, it's helped tremendously. So it's uh, I appreciate this channel and everyone that I've got to meet and everything. It's been a blessing, huge blessing. You know, I've talked to a lot of people who have used their channels or whose channels were born out of a need to make something right or uh, a, a need to use this passion for knives to make other changes in their lives. And myself included. Um, I, I I always had a problem with consistency, and um, for me, it's been working with Jim, uh, our producer here, who's uh, not only an awesome producer uh, who keeps me accountable, but he's a close friend, and that you know I don't want to let him down. And um, so, working on this channel and this podcast has made me a more consistent person, and um, 
I, I don't know. I think it's cool. I know a lot of other people have used their channels for for other things and have been very public about it. And uh, I do appreciate appreciate that because I think that's what gets people to connect. You know, I agree, hundred uh, percent. Some people they, they have their own reasons to do it, and uh, I think they're all good in their own right. And I always tell people, like, if you're you're scared, just do it. Just get out there. I mean, once you film your first video, the hardest part is over. That's right. It's just a uh, smooth sailing from there, as they say. Sometimes you get a bumpy road, but just just do it. If you're if you're if you're thinking about it, whoever's listening, yeah. just do it. It's uh, and and don't ever expect to like your voice or your likeness on camera. Don't like like give like dispossess yourself of that immediately. Yes, I've tried to change my voice. I got like a microphone. I got these lavalier thingies. Yeah, if you don't like your voice, you never will. Just get past that. <laughs> so it seems like a, a big part of that for you and on your channel is uh, your lives with said Stevie. Um, tell me about the live show. Uh, we do Wednesdays and uh... it's late, right? Oh, you're thinking of said faction. Those are Friday nights. Oh, said faction. I'm sorry. Said faction started because uh, one day we were just bored. And like it was 10 o'clock for me and him. We had Pacific time at the same time. Uh, sometimes I'm an hour ahead of him. But at that time, we were at the same time. So we just went live. And there was like 10 people that joined. And it was really laid back. So we just did it again the next week and then the next week. And people seemed to like really like it. And so we just kind of use it as a, a hangout session, just like my Wednesday one. Sometimes we'll talk about knives. Sometimes we won't. It's just uh, how the chat flows. We kind of let the chat decide. I, I like in my lives is like going to the bar. You see a couple of your buddies. You just go hang out and chat. Maybe it's going to be about a knife or maybe uh, someone's having a hard time. So, I mean, we one of my favorite lives, there was this woman. She came. And uh, she, all she said was, I'm having a terrible day. Make me laugh. And then for the next hour, the entire chat was just filled with like dad jokes and lame <laughs> jokes. And uh, everyone was in tears laughing so hard. Like, it's, it's just the way it goes. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah uh, people give a lot of lip service to the knife communities like none other. But I kind of. I, I believe it. I don't know. I haven't been involved in a bunch of other communities, but I believe it uh, because because what other business? Because that's what it is. Ultimately, it's a business. What other business environment are people uh, happily, you know, kumbaya with one another? And, sh and not only that, but among knife makers, sharing secrets and techniques and uh, uh, ideas about marketing and all this kind of stuff. It's not it's not just among the, you know, fans and and lovers of collectors no yeah i've i've learned a lot that everyone here mostly wants to build each other up uh we've had a couple people that like you know they're they're not so on the positive side and usually they get chased out fairly quickly mm -hmm. like they're looking for just freebies or just to cause trouble <laughs> and uh, they get they get chased out pretty quick so i mean this knife community builds each other up but also like closely guards each other and I, I think that's uh you don't see that anywhere else yeah i'd be i'd be surprised if you did i had, I had someone chew me out once for not doing enough giveaways this was a long time ago i, I feel like now i do too many or whatever but it's like you know you don't love your fans man you don't give any and i was like <laughs> But I do all this stuff, man, for free. I, you know, yeah. you can watch it. You don't have to watch it. But, uh, you know, I, I'm i not a giveaway channel. Me either. But people, like, when they come to my lives, they know 90% of the time, no giveaway. We're just here to chill. Just here uh, to chill. Yeah, that's that's what we do on mine. So let's talk about the last, say, year or so in knives and and what's over the horizon um i want to get an idea from you like what are some of the knives over the past year that you've been bonkers about what's coming out besides your own that you're excited about I, and i asked this i i have my uh sentinel strike in my pocket today and this was one i was so psyched about haven't carried in a long time since today 
And it just made me think about how we get excited about stuff. Um, well, what are you excited about? So I have a knife being made right now by a guy named uh, Aries EDC. Uh, he's a small knife maker. I wonder if I have a sticker somewhere. Uh, he's really cool, dude. Uh, check out his channel. Uh, here's his logo here. I always hold it the wrong direction, but there's his <laughs> name, Aries EDC. I think it goes like that. I don't know. I always get yelled at every time. They're like, you're holding it upside down. <laughs> so he's making me a cool fixed blade called the uh, pistol. Oh, nice. And then... Well, wait, wait, wait. Before you move on, tell us about the pistol just a little bit. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to describe. Can I find a picture of it? Or do you want me to just describe it? Yeah, just describe it. Okay, so it's a drop point, and it's got a harpoon on it. And uh, the scales I picked for it are resin laminated wood, red and black layered. Mm -hmm. So as he's contouring it, some of the red's going to stick out. And uh, it's uh, the steel is AEBL. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I haven't seen it finished. He's still working on the final touches. He had to send it out to get heat treated. He doesn't heat treat AEBL himself. Ah. Uh, he gets it professionally done. But he also works with other steels that he will heat treat. I just don't know why AEBL is different. I'm not a huge steel snob, so I'm still learning that. But right. he sends those out. So he just got it back, but uh, I'm, I'm I'm really excited for it. So are you going to um, uh, sell that on a, <clears throat> excuse me, like a pre-order basis or do you oh, have no, a bunch? No, no. Sorry. That, that's a knife just for me. Oh, that, <laughs> oh I like it. it. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, nice. Uh, I didn't know you were talking about knives being made or whatever for me. No. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I was, I was talking in general uh, about knives on the market, uh, trends and certain knives on the market uh, anything that's exciting to you anything new that's coming out well uh uh my, my boy sharif he's uh he's yeah. one of my best friends so he's shown me like his designs coming out <clears throat> so honestly he's the one to be watching for just awesome cool stuff uh, i have his kaimano i was gonna show you oh yeah um, right here. This is the one he just came out with. And mm, so, oh, this one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, Harpoon this, Tonto. Yes. Uh, this is, this is just the beginning for Sharif. The stuff he has coming out is, I don't I don't know if I want to say it's better than this. Cause this is already pretty awesome. But as for future markets, I mean, he's the guy I'm watching and it helps that he, he's a, he's a friend. And you can see uh, all the schmutz. I actually use my knives. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. That's so. a beauty, man. Uh, so that's an Americanized Tonto there with that secondary point and the yep. large opening hole in a harpoon. Beautiful blade. Uh, that's one thing. People need to get used to American Tontos. Like, from what I understand, they don't buy them because they don't know how to sharpen them. But if you just <laughs> treat it as two edges, you'll keep that point instead of rounding yeah. it off just two edges like and they're awesome that that point is so utilitarian for everything it's laziness yeah, matt they're like i don't want to sharpen two blades at is. once but yeah i mean it's so utilitarian it couldn't be more utilitarian it's basically like you have two worn cliffs uh because everyone loves the worn cliff for its straightness and its lower uh point well on the americanized tanto you have the lower point you have that straight edge and then you have another uh, basically a repeat of it uh going up from the from that first point yeah. um, and it lets you keep a good reinforced tip for piercing and it, it looks cool it does, i mean that's got to stand the, for uh, something with that harpoon right there so i mean for future market knives keep an eye on sharif he is uh he is just an awesome dude and his knife philosophy comes from cars he used to design cars and stuff so you'll see some oh, wow. some pretty futuristic looking stuff in here so but he's he's the guy i'm watching and even if he wasn't a friend he would still be the guy i'm watching 
it's amazing how you can't like um, you you can't decide what's going to appeal to you. S -s things just kind of out of the blue will uh, uh, the Phoenix for for instance, and this is not to uh, blow hot air in your direction, but uh, I have kind of veered away from uh, upswept clip. I love clip points. I love Bowie's, but I've I've in recently been veering away from upswept clip points and upswept anything. Uh, in in deference to the Warren Cliff, I'm a sucker for the Warren Cliff right now. I have been yeah. for a long time, but uh, the Phoenix has uh, has the appeal that brought me right back. I mean, I immediately loved that design when I saw it, um, and and that to me that just goes to show that uh, you can have your preferences, and some of them are for oh, I like to work with a Warren Cliff more because I have the tip down low bulb. Uh, for me, it's not really much of that because I don't really use my knives much. It it really I can make do with whatever knife I have in my pocket for whatever my chore is. Um, but uh, to to see something that jogs you out of your current taste is exciting. I agree with that. That's what the Caivano did. A, a harpoon, American Tonto, spear point, almost like it was. It was cool to see. Got, but, got you to look a different way. Sorry. If you want a sneak peek of something else I'm working on. Yeah. Do you like gentlemen's knives? Like yes, CEO's sir. Style? I'm working on a clip point. Uh, gentleman's, Ooh. Uh, kind of a steak knife. Yeah. But it's going to taper where you would pinch like a steak knife. And then I'm also trying to. Oh, wait, wait. Hold that up so we can see that real quick. Uh, the, uh, hold it up. Uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I see what you mean. Right at the Ricasso, it kind of tapers in. Yeah, that's where right where you would like hold the steak knife to cut. Yeah. And one thing I want to try, I'm going to submit this to Kaiser. Is uh, do you remember the uh, artisan Ahab? Yeah, right. by um, by Niche Designs. Yeah, the yeah the, his weight relief made his inside look like uh like whale bones and stuff yes yes so i want to try to do weight relief on this one to where it looks like a t-bone steak <laughs> that's awesome i yes, love it so what's cool is that like if you were to design a knife which i think you actually did didn't you um you could you could have fun with some of the like easter egg stuff on the inside yes and so like I thought it would be awesome if like you just took this apart and all of a sudden you're staring at T-bone steaks on the inside. That I, I love that. I love that idea. And I like the idea of the Easter egg, uh, especially in, so I'm not a huge fan of Ultim though. I, I like that sort of color. I know a lot of people compare it to urine. Uh, I, I actually like the color. I'm just not crazy about trans. I don't know. I'm just not crazy about it on knives. I have one Ultim knife and that's pretty much all I need, but I've seen a few Kaiser does a good job with it where um, they really kind of make the, what you're doing uh, except less pictorial. They make uh, the understructure or the substructure look very attractive. So you're seeing yeah. through that Ultim and then you're also seeing this very nice structure underneath. I think it's cool. I mean, you, you gotta have fun with it. Otherwise, your basic rate weight relief is like circles or rectangles. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, you could put your own little personal touch. So I'm, I'm gonna go for the uh, the T-bone steak. <laughs> I like I that. Happened. And by the I way, also, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. sorry. I was gonna say I also really like the shape of the blade. But what were you gonna yeah, say? Nice swoopy. I, I wanted to point out. Do you remember the doodle I showed you of the first phoenix? Yes. Uh, I actually drew this. So. This is all me. So serious improvement. Yes, that's all I was gonna say. If you stick with it, you literally can improve. I never thought. Like I, I am so proud of my straight lines here, and like I never thought I could ever do that. Well, uh, that's also a beautiful mechanical drawing because you're showing it in the three, you know, aspects, and you've got all the lines uh, between the different. Uh, knives, so everything is kind of locked in proportionate, proportionally. I approve, sir. If I had Thank a knife you. company, I'd run it. I, I actually, I never, ever, ever use uh, restaurant um, supplied steak knives. I will use the the Victorinox Classic on my keychain if I forget my um, my steak knife. Uh, it's always some. I have a a small 
sort of stable staple of uh of steak knives that i'll bring with me just folders that i like but i do the same like my real steel i even got it in this nice little slit uh, oh yeah uh, people got mad at me for keeping the clip on in the slip but you know what <laughs> this is my knife i'll carry however i yeah. want but this has gone through many a steak because i also do not use restaurant knives yeah yeah the soggy handle the 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 loose fit between blade and handle and then that yeah. dull serrated blade and it chews your steak up <laughs> i know it's like nice <laughs> right through it <laughs> that's a perfect way to say it it does it pre-chews your food it's like come on man that's <laughs> my job i'm the man <laughs> buying the steak all right uh i want to get to a speed round uh uh before we end here uh because i i, I like to find out what your tastes are in quick one answer uh answers one one answer answers is that right yeah sounds good yeah, to me that's about right we'll try all right um all righty sir hang on i'm i'm going to uh, customize one of the questions to you uh oh all right okay starting the speed round now fixed or folder folder Flipper or thumb stud? I'm leaning towards thumb stud these days. Very nice. Washers or bearings? Uh, that's uh, that's tricky. Depends on the application, but I'll go with bearings for now. Uh, tip up or tip down? Tip down. Tip down. Tip down. Do I have a backwards tip up? Okay. I, I was gonna say it? you didn't. You didn't. You tip didn't up. design the. Yeah. Tip up. Okay. <laughs> everyone's like oh <laughs> yeah I had, to, I had to think about it <laughs> uh tanto or bowie and, and by tanto i mean americanized tanto right now i'll go with tanto just because of that kaimano hollow grind or flat grind hollow grind's more slicey so i'll go with hollow grind bushcrafting flat grind would be all right but uh, like you, I don't do much bush crafting. Hollow grind for me works better, and it looks cool. It does. Uh, full size or small? Full size. I'm a cold steel guy. Yeah, yeah. Here, here. Um, gentleman's knife or tactical knife? I'm leaning towards gentlemen's these days. I got all the CEOs, the real steel. All right, a cold steel guy, leaning gentleman. I like that. It's a uh, design one. Well, that's like some, well uh you know the okaso knives do you know okaso i do they're awesome and you know the connection to cold steel yes the demko i have an okaso somewhere uh the guy uh rick uh valdez who runs it and owns it used to work for cold steel for years so i know he uses a lot of the taiwanese manufacturing all right uh back to the back to the speed round um automatic or bally song automatic all right automatic. so is that an out the front or out the side i like otfs out the front all right button lock or bar lock uh, button lock okay all right here's a here's a, a, a bench made or spider co spider co now I want to come back to that uh, uh, <laughs> now. And then I have another one I want to come back to and ask you about. Uh, okay. Uh, M390 or 20CV? 20CV. All right. Uh, is that because it's American? Yes. Okay. It's the same steel, but American. Right, that's what I thought. That's what <laughs> I thought. I think when I wrote this, I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, milled titanium or spring clip? Milled titanium. That's what's on the Phoenix. <laughs> Kaiser or Kubi? Kaiser. Carbon fiber or micarta? Carbon fiber these days. With all the cool exotic carbon fibers, it's kind of hard to say no to. So Even though. Yeah. Uh, finger choil or no choil? I like a good finger choil. Form or function? Uh, function. I want a knife that works how it's supposed to work. Function with an asterisk, though. It has to look good, I think, yeah, is what... I think so. I, I, like, I like agree. The, like the, the choil, you know, this this is form and function. 
That is a nice knife. That what well, that's a ferrum forge there. Yeah, the Alluris. That's beautiful. Very simple, but they got the form and the function down. And All right, last easy. question. <laughs> your desert island knife, Matt. This is the the one knife you get to keep for the rest of your life. You have to sell everything else. Sell everything. Or else. or you can acquire it if you don't have it, but it's the one knife you get. The one knife, desert island. Your own knives aren't included. The Phoenix I, doesn't. I wouldn't, not on a desert island. This, the, it'd get sand in the bearings. <laughs> I'll go with my Espada XL. That thing can do everything. <sighs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I've never had that answer. I only do the speed round with people like yourself who have a channel, who look at a lot of different knives. And I've never had anyone say that. And it warms the cockles of my heart because I think that would make a fantastic. A desert island knife and when i say desert island i mean it more metaphorically uh but being literal also excellent excellent choice but i wanted to ask you about uh i said benchmade or spiderco and you said spiderco now what did that well mean? i i used to I, I like benchmade but their prices are kind of getting wonky and i've yeah. been playing more with some spidercos and i i, I do like spiderco and this is going to sound stupid, but because, you know, I like space, some of their knives say like made in golden or golden Colorado earth. Yes. yes I, like, I, I like that, that part. Yeah, me too. It's those, me th too. those Easter eggs. I love, I love that. And, and I feel like that'll be valuable in the next century because at some point it's going to be like, is this on, is this, was this made on the Mars factory or on the satellite factory or it the earth be. factory? Yeah, yeah. I think it's neat. They're, they're, think they're cool. thinking ahead. Yeah, but, like I said, I love Easter eggs. So, like that little touch will get me to buy your knife. <laughs> I I dig it. All right, before uh, I let you go, just remind us of the name of the knife you have coming out. You have the Phoenix from Kaiser, so beautiful, upswept uh, Persian clip point. Uh, what is the name of the knife you have in the offing here? Oh, look at that, the Orion. The Orion, My aggressive Warncliffe, full crazy I love it so hopefully awesome. i hear something <laughs> these are those you'll hear something moments. if you if whoever's listening if you design a knife don't stress these moments even though they're very stressful you will get your email it's just they work on china time and it's different they they, they don't keep tabs they're like i will tell you when it's done <laughs> so just uh uh, tie your camel and trust in God, and and uh, you'll you'll hear you'll hear back from him. Matt, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. It's been a pleasure, and also uh, it's also awesome that you you check in on Thursday Night Knives. It's always cool to see you commenting, I'm like, oh, we have a star with us. <laughs> you know, it's always cool to see you. Well, you know what I mean. Like you're making knives, and you're out there, and and it's always great to have you. So thank you so much for joining me on the show. They're fun. You and uh, Jim. I mean, we. I, I would like to see more Jim. So, Jim but. used to be. Jim used to show himself uh, a lot, and now he prefers to to cut it up backstage. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring him out sometime yes. soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Oh no! Thanks for having me on. My pleasure, sir. Take care. Do you use terms like handle the blade ratio, walk and talk, hair pop and sharp, or tank like? Then you are a dork and a knife junkie. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Matt of Mattis Faction. Uh, can't wait to get my hands on the Orion. That looks really cool, very much up my alley, especially with that uh, triangular tip and straight edge. Uh, but also, the Phoenix is so cool. Definitely check it out and and let's try and help uh, help him get in touch with Post Malone. He's got to see this knife and he's got to get a couple for himself. All right. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to join us next week for another interview and Wednesday for the midweek supplemental Thursday for Thursday Night Knives. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer.
Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.